In this video, we will be taking a look at basic dimensioning tools in AutoCAD Architecture 2015. I started with a new drawing and I'm going to use my line command to create a vertical line and a horizontal line and I want to put a couple dimensions on those different lines. So I'm going to come up here to the annotate tab and I'm going to take a look at my various dimensions that I can put on. The basic dimension is a linear dimension and that is just from two separate points so I'm going to left click one time on that to activate that command and my command line down here at the bottom says to specify the first extension line origin which just means where do you want to measure from well on my drawing I want to measure from the top part so I'm gonna click on the top part if I take a look back down at my command line it says specify second extension line origin which just basically means where do you want to measure to so I want to measure to this point right here and then I'm going to pull the dimension out wherever I want it to be now again I'm using the TD template and there are some default settings that are already set up for the type of drawings that we're going to be doing the only other thing that I want to mention is we want our dimensions to be in the dimension line layer so that we can differentiate them between the actual object. It will just help clarify things a little bit. To change this dimension into the dimension line layer, I'm going to select my dimension and it selects the entire thing, all the extension lines, arrowheads, dimension lines, dimensions. I'm going to come up to my home tab. I'm going to come over here to my layer menu. And I'm going to select dimension line layer and then escape to deselect that. And as you can see, it's put that in the dimension line layer. Now, when I hit escape, it jumped back to my object layer, which is what the TD template defaults to. If I want to put in another dimension on this horizontal line, but I don't want to have to constantly be changing the layers, I'm going to select the dimension line layer before I put my dimension on, and then it's already going to be in that dimension line layer. So once again, I'm going to come up to Annotate. I'm going to come over here to Linear, the Linear Dimension. I'm going to come down to my part and select the first point and select the second point and pull that a little distance away. Now again, we want this to be aesthetically pleasing. It wouldn't make much sense to have a dimension way 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 far away from our part it doesn't look good and it just doesn't make sense so make sure those dimensions are fairly close but again they're not too close that they are on top of the object lines or or conflict with the way things look so those are our uh, the basic dimension tool that we are going to be using for many of the drawings. Next I want you to draw a line at an angle and I'm in the dimension line layer so I'm going to change that to the object layer and I want to put a dimension on this line. Now if I put a linear dimension that will give me a dimension but it'll give me a dimension from the starting point to the end point in a, either a vertical or horizontal fashion and I want to know the actual length of that line so instead of the linear dimension 
I'm going to use the aligned dimension. So I'm going to select that tool by left clicking one time. I'm going to specify my first point. I'm going to specify my second point and then pull that a little distance away. And that's going to have our dimension aligned with a line that may not be perfectly vertical or horizontal. The next tool we're going to use is another dimensioning tool. We're going to create an angle and it doesn't matter what angle it is because we're just practicing here. I'm going to come up to the annotate tab I'm going to come over here to the dimension angular, select that one. I'm going to select my first angle and select my second angle. And that's going to go ahead and put my dimension in. Let's switch that dimension over to the dimension line. Now you do have to be careful because right now we have arrowheads that are touching or pointing to object lines which means our object lines are being used as extension lines and depending on the particular drawing that in itself might violate one of those rules for dimensioning. A better method would be to come back up here to annotate select our two lines and pull it out beyond our object. Let's get rid of this one. So now we have our arrowheads touching extension lines. And this is a little bit more acceptable because the dimension is not on top of the part. And again, you know, this is just a couple lines. We don't know what the rest of the drawing looks like. But this particular setup in many cases is more acceptable than say if our dimension was actually inside our object and those arrowheads were touching object lines. A lot of times that, that's a no-no for uh, dimensioning. The next thing I'm going to do is create a circle. Let's go ahead and stick that circle in the object line. And I'm going to annotate and I'm going to come up here to my circle and it defaults to radius but because I have a full circle I know from the dimensioning rules that anytime I have a full circle I need to use the diameter. So we can click that little down arrow and it gives us an option to do the diameter instead of the radius left click one time, select my circle, and it puts my circle in. Now it also puts center marks in and I might not want those in there. Sometimes that will help, sometimes you don't want those in. For the purpose of this lesson, uh, it's okay if those center marks are automatically put in now the issue is it put those center marks in but those center marks are in the dimension line layer and that will cause us some problems down the road because if we try to change those center marks to the center line layer it puts our dimension in the center line layer as well and we don't want that. I'll show you how to remove that in just a minute. But first, let's do another circle. But we're just going to do a little piece of the circle. So I have an arc, which is not a complete circle. And if you recall, anytime there is not a complete circle, we want to use the radius instead of a diameter. A full circle, we use a diameter. Anything less than a full circle, we use a radius. So I'll come up here to annotate, select my little down arrow, and go to radius, and select my circle. 
and again it put those center marks in. To remove the center marks, there's again there's 10 different ways to do it, but the easiest way is to double click on the dimension and it brings up our properties tab for that particular dimension setup. I want to come down here and locate center mark and right now it says my center mark is a line. I want to change that to none. And then it gets rid of it all together. Now if I wanted to put the center mark back in I could come back here to center line, come up to annotate, center mark, and then select that circle. And then it put those center marks in the way that I want them to be in. So once again, I can double click on my dimension. I'm going to locate where it says lines and arrows, and this is under the design tab. And I'm going to change my center mark to none. And I can again come back if I wanted to, oops, if I wanted to add a center mark, I could put that in. And perhaps I don't need these little extending lines. I just want to show that this is the center point of this particular arc. So all in all, those are some of the basic tools for dimensioning. And those are the same ones that we're going to be using in the upcoming drawings.